Hello, I'm Travis, and this is... Faith. Faith. Say it with conviction. <laughs> of faith. And this is the TBD Spotlight Podcast. It's a bonus episode. Every time a student or somebody for some kind of class wants to interview either Josh or I, we make them come into the studio and we force them to be on a podcast so we can use it for content. And then my <laughs> daughter walks in right when we start. Do you want to come say hello? Yeah, um, can I go to the bathroom? We're, we're filming. You need to use the restroom? Okay, you have to say hi to the camera though. <laughs> hi. Okay. <laughs> So there will be interruptions, and it's not in the studio because we've been trying to set it up for like three weeks, and this is due in two days, or one day. Yeah, it's soon. It's due very soon. <laughs> so um, basically, she's going to conduct an interview, Faith here is going to, and then I'm going to answer questions, and then we're just going to see where the conversation goes. Might go into politics, might talk about movie reviews, <laughs> might just you know, answer the questions and be done, but it's an adventure. For real. So Faith, tell them about you. Um, I'm born and raised Coeur d'Alene. I uh, went to Coeur d'Alene Charter Academy for middle school and high school. Now I'm going to North Idaho College. Um, to like general studies major, nice. planning on being a teacher. How did you end up in media class? It's like a, it's one of the electives and um, there's a required class that's like attached to it. And I was like, uh, it's either that or English that I've already done. And this seems interesting. So I'll, I'll go for that one. Awesome. Um, I guess you should ask your questions <laughs> or at least maybe one of your questions. We'll take turns. Yeah, yeah. So what what's like an average work day for you like? Well, today we woke up at 4.30, got the cards ready and went and filmed a safety firearms course out at one of the um, shooting ranges locally. And then tomorrow, it varies, is what I'm saying. It's like some days we'll have just a bunch of meetings because we run a marketing agency um, locally and uh, we'll either be on an adventure filming something super unique or we'll be smoking cigars and having meetings all day with different clients or, you know, and then there are days where you just stay home and hide and try to finish the editing that's piling up. Because that's my job. <laughs> How much of it is like editing versus recording? Uh, I mean, everything that's recorded has to be edited. So I'd say it's about 50-50. Makes we sense. We do all our own filming, do all of our own editing. And, you know, some things take longer than others. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, yes, my question. <laughs> uh, what's been your favorite class at NIC? Definitely the um, intercultural communications class. We, it's, it's like, it's very much a community type thing. Um, our, our instructor made sure that we like didn't use any technology or anything. Oh, no. Um, Immediate translations. Yes, yeah. translations. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we all have to, like, interact with each other a lot. And so you kind of become friends with everyone. So how does that work? Is that, like, set up with other schools, like, in different it's cultures? Just, or it's like... just, like, uh, teaching people around here about different cultures. Oh, so most of us are, like, you know, the typical demographic of this area. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. So that we, we have like like this unit on different religions, uh, units about like different, like how music interacts with culture, like just stuff yeah. like that, you know? <laughs> I bet that's useful in order to know when, you know, yeah. everyone is, there's not much cult, different cultures, not, not many different cultures in our area. <laughs> yeah, kind of have to, have to try to learn about it. You don't just like learn it through experience. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's your next question? Um, what's your favorite and least favorite part of your, your job? Um, I love the editing, but I hate uh, editing sometimes. <laughs> I get it. Uh, these days, I mean, when I first started in, um, video, when I started my videography company, it, it was all about making like amazing videos for people. And nowadays it's about um, 
helping businesses succeed. I, uh, I really enjoy coming up with the strategy on how we're going to market them and how we're going to help a business get out there in front of people, how we can like calculate the exact ROI, how, how much money they will spend per ad oh, gotcha. and, you know, doing that competitively with other ads that are being run and it's all an interesting world i don't do any of that nerd stuff that's my business partner mm -hmm. but i like to appreciate it and talk about it with people and then sometimes you know we create like awesome commercials that we can use Ooh. his talent to push out and <laughs> actually bring people in because when i first started we'd make videos and i'd hand it off to the person that hired me to make the video and they'd be like, it didn't work. And I'd be like, well, what did you do with it? And they're like, oh, well, we put it on our Facebook page with 12 followers. And I'm like, oh, and anything well, yeah. else? We started a YouTube channel and put it on there and it's just not going viral. And I'm just <laughs> like, well, <laughs> can't help you with that. Yeah. I made it, here you go. <laughs> but then nowadays we can actually push it out to where it needs to go. Let's see, what do you want to do with your future? Um, okay, so this is kind of funny. I originally came up with this as like a joke to my brother and then I realized I actually kind of want to do it. I was thinking like, what if I was like an elementary school teacher or a high school teacher, not a middle school teacher, they're mean. Middle you know? school teachers are mean? Middle, no, middle school students are mean to oh, their teachers. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's an awkward phase, you know, yeah, you're, just... you're cute as pie and then suddenly you're the devil and then you're like almost adults. Yeah. It's, it's a... <laughs> so I'd rather be with, like, like little kids or like almost almost adults. There you go. Um, but just like like doing that and then being a, a birthday party clown on the oh, side. Oh, birthday party clown on the side. Yeah. <laughs> Using my students oh, to you, network. You'd have an awesome TikTok account. For real, I've seen like so many like like clowns on TikTok, and they yeah. they're so inspiring. They seem like so fun. <laughs> inspiring clowns. But anyway, for... does, does an IC offer a clown degree at all, or? I don't think so. There are clown schools. I know. I kind of want to go to them, but they seem like they're like more like acrobatics and like mm -hmm. the, the like physical comedy, which I would yeah. not be doing. Well, didn't like Sasha Baron Cohen, go to, or is he just like the ultimate clown? Do you know who that is? No. Oh. <laughs> My wife. You know. Oh, I get it. I get okay. it. Hey, she got the reference. All right. <laughs> I'm not very versed in pop culture. <laughs> no, he's, uh, you probably saved yourself some heartbreak watch, not watching it. It's rough <laughs> stuff, but it's interesting and fun. Yeah. He's like the actual jester. He, he puts people in situations that and pushes things to the limit with actual people. And it's like candid camera on crack. It's just too much, but it's also pretty funny. Gotcha. Um, but I'm, what's the, what you asked earlier about what I would teach, um, I'm thinking if like I go with elementary school, which is what seems like what I'm gonna do, just like a homeroom teacher, right. um, just general basics. But um, if I went with high school, I'd have to I'd have to pick something, and yeah. that's that's a little more difficult because I'm what very indecisive. Oh. Maybe like a maybe like a science, maybe a like, science. like biology, maybe. Yeah. Well, and then high school science is fun. You yeah. Know, it's like, you get the pigs and the, or the frog. It, it were frogs in high school, or is that all college? Uh, I oh, I didn't do any the high, uh, frogs, but I've known people that have. Mm. I uh, dissected a lamb heart and I think an eyeball, if I'm remembering correctly, correctly. I think a cow eyeball. Oh, cow eyeball. Okay. Not a human eye. <laughs> no, I was about to say. How many eyeballs are being donated for <laughs> high school classes? <laughs> cool, cool. Well, your question. <laughs> uh, how long have you been working in marketing? Has it like changed since you've started significantly? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I started in media in 2015. And then a few years ago, uh, so I built my website, I built my brand, I built everything that you need to be an actual business. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there's only weddings in the summer. So I'm like, well, if I want this to grow, I got to do other stuff. So I started doing some real estate, some marketing, and then um, people wanted to find me. So I'm like, well, I better build a website. And then it looked like crap. I'm like, well, I better do some branding. So I built out the logo and then the brand and the style and made my own commercials for my own services. And then enough people were asking me to do 
those things. I'm like, well, I, why not? I mean, if I, 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 keep I used to be very pure, just like, no, I, I do videos. I'm an artiste, and then you need money. And yeah. Like, well, might as well learn how to do everything else because I had to to do it for myself anyway. And then I ran into Josh, my business partner, and he's he and we call it he activates the nerd vision like he knows he knows all of the numbers that make up the interwebs and the google and the facebook and how to how to make it so that actually benefits a company because if you could make a cool video and you put it on facebook it can be nice but it's not gonna like it doesn't guarantee success no and it's uh basically you have to do a video every day and post your story every day if you yeah. want to grow organically so it's nice for people to find if they're already kind of on social media for the business, but, and if they're like looking you up, it's nice to have content, but at the same time, if you want to use it to effectively market, you need to know how to effectively use it. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> um, my question, what's your favorite movie and why? Ooh. Probably Legally Blonde. Legally it's just Blonde. so fun. It's just That's a classic a too. <laughs> I think. Is it a classic now? How, I think how, so. how old does something have to be to be a classic? I think <laughs> at least 10 years, and I think it was released in 2001. Yeah, so it's been something a bit. Something like that. <laughs> Legally Blonde. I need to watch that again. It's so fun. It's so rewatchable. Like I get, I get like... that mixed up with like Miss Congeniality or something. Isn't that another like woman like has to do something that they're not used to doing? <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Oh. <laughs> um, I think she becomes, she's like a cop or something, but she has to enter a beauty contest. And then Legally Blonde is like the opposite because. Yeah. And then she like a, a lawyer who. Yeah. She goes know. from being like a, a sorority girl who's never a known struggle to being a, a Harvard uh, graduate. So early 2000s, female empowerment. Yo, for real. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Lawyers and cops. <laughs> well, they can do anything. <laughs> and they can. Don't cancel me. Please. We love women. We all do. <laughs> I love women a lot. For real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. You just got internet points. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> uh, so how did you get started with, with media? Well, I think you might have already kind of answered this. Well, what happened was I used to like making silly videos with my brother on YouTube. And then one day... I was working as a nurse in the hospital and they had a, um, they had this competition every year during nurses week or something. And the different units would make a video and then play it on the projector and whichever video got the most votes won this silly trophy thing. But it was taken very seriously, you see. And um, I was part of the nurse resource team the first time and I was like, yeah, I know how to make a video. So we made a really awesome one and we won. And then a couple years later, every year I'd make the video, but I started having other units ask me to make their video too. And then I did enough of those. I was like, okay, but I, you know, <laughs> I can't give it that extra push because I do, like we can't compete against my own. But yeah. really they just want, they want to help me. You have to come up with a concept, you have to plan it out, and then I'll just film it and edit it for you. So me volunteering all my time got it to the point where one of the nurses I worked with asked me to film her wedding. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I got a couple of high school interns that needed their job shadowing hours. And uh, we all had iPhones and we were all prepared to film a wedding on iPhones. But then I filled out a sheet of exactly how we do it. I storyboarded the, their whole wedding day. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use that to sell like four more weddings at like 500 a pop and buy a real like Canon camera and an iMac to edit on before we filmed our first one. So nice. we started off really, it, I don't know how it was gonna turn out. And then after that, we were able to film enough weddings in a row to, we were able to film them with more professional equipment and it's kind of how it all started. And, um, then I just kept utilizing high school interns and college interns of not making very enough, just buy, buying a new piece of equipment every single time we got a new job, we'd buy a new piece of equipment. So that's kind of the best way to start a business like that. 
because there's no overhead except for the equipment. Yeah. If you have the equipment you need to do what you need to do, then you're golden. Yeah. So that's how I got started. Let's see. Um, who will is your favorite teacher at NIC? Oh, good question. And you can't say, well, you can if it's the teacher that's associated with this class. I like all of them. Oh, you like all I'm of them? I'm taking the, the cop out answer, oh, but I don't really have like oh, a, a favorite yet. <laughs> that's not. Oh. You have a least favorite? Maybe we won't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I will say um, the online classes are a lot more frustrating, yeah. especially when the teacher doesn't communicate very well uh, or doesn't know how to use Canvas, which is like the, <laughs> um, you're, you're familiar with it, right? Yeah. 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 Like the uh, classroom app thing. Um, so, so I prefer in-person classes by mm -hmm. a long shot and almost all of those like yeah. are really fun and I enjoy them. I, I, I'm terrible. I was the opposite. I was like... <laughs> Don't talk to me. Tell me what I need to know. <laughs> so I, think so. I would sit in the back of the class and turn their PowerPoints into notes instead of listening because I just, I don't know, wasn't a good student. <laughs> <laughs> but more power to you that you enjoy <laughs> actually you. going Thank to class. Know. See, my thing is I don't have enough motivation to go online and like really learn the material. Mm. So being in class kind of forces me to because it's like, what, sure. what else am I going to do? Not like, pay uh, attention? Like osmosis where you kind of soak it in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I remember it's something. I think that's the correct use of osmosis, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like a water going through a semi-permeable membrane. That's yeah. the definition. The membrane. Membrane's your brain. Yeah. Right? The water's knowledge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, this is a science podcast now. <laughs> Um, is it my turn? I think so. So what uh, what hoops did you have to jump through to get started and continue to like run your business? Like any government things or like uh, yeah, work to make it official or anything? Not a whole lot. I mean, you can go to the sole proprietorship route, which I started with, and then there's the LLC, and then you know basically there's a bunch of different business categorizations. Yeah. It's that you want to be part of for different reasons. Um, I'm not the most knowledgeable person on it, though. That's fair. These days, I, I have Josh activate nerd vision and take care of it for <laughs> me. And I can just sit there and look pretty and make people laugh, sell content. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So, yeah, I mean, there's if you're going to start a business, you should probably look into what you need to do. I mean, get your business name written down, get a license that says you're an official business, and then what kind of business you are. And do taxes. Don't skip taxes. <laughs> yeah. So okay, this is just me personally. Um, with like like having your own business, you don't have like a W two to copy. How do you <laughs> how do you even know what the it's numbers really have the complicated. So you, if it depends on if you've paid yourself out of the company that you own, then you do have a W two paid by the company. But if you're like a sole proprietorship and all the money just kind of goes back into your account, you should have them separate because tax is a nightmare if you don't. Makes sense. But you have to keep track of everything that you've purchased for the business because things you buy for the business, you get write-offs for. You've heard you business owners always talk about yeah. the write-offs. Yeah. So keep every receipt. If you if you're it's a business lunch, it's a business lunch. If you're yeah. driving for business. Keep track of that. If you buy a new camera, make sure you keep that receipt because otherwise every dollar on the dollar you get fined even though you were paying it back into the business. Yeah. I've had like, taxed on it. I, I work at Panera and I've had people like ask their receipts and be like, I'm going to write this off as business lunch. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, if it is, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had friends that smoke cigars and I'm just like, and then he's like, say something businessy and then I'll say this. Yes. It's a write off now. <laughs> Ask me about this. <laughs> so, you know, but the write-offs are very seriously and you should only write off things that are explicitly business oriented. Okay. I mean, that's because I'm, you know, if, if I do succeed as a party clown as well, no, yeah. it's going to be, I'm going to be having to if you're gonna buy the write red, stuff the red off. nose and the wig and then the big shoes that yeah. make the sounds. Yeah, you, got, you need to be able to write all that off. Yeah, 
I can get fun, like, colorful clothes and ride it off. Plus, if you get enough of it, you can rent it out to other party clowns. Like, if you have a giant closet of it. I got you. And you, you could even start creating clown costumes and you could rent them out that way you make money off your competitors <laughs> and you also succeed as your own party clown you can become like a party clown agent it's a way to make it even more of a business nice make money off of every clown and then you can market them and have like a you have like a directory of clowns and they can pick their favorite clown <laughs> take pictures of them in like a studio I you, think you there are like take pictures of like, I think there are like clown agencies where they yeah. like. You could be you could be like, clown agency two point oh, run it like <laughs> a high profile, uh, thing that directs people to people. Clown spies. Yes, <laughs> yes, that would be great. I hope you do that. <laughs> then I'll say I knew her back when she wasn't famous and rich. You have to remember us little people. Hey. <laughs> Also, I'm going to charge you like a finder's fee for helping contribute to the <laughs> idea. So I look forward to that. <laughs> it's like, hey, I help with that. <sighs> I think it's my turn, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what's the most interesting thing you've learned in your media class this year? Just like how expensive advertising is because like I know like advertising pays for most of like the internet and media and stuff like that but like just how much it is like per advertisement was like baffling to me yes it is expensive for good reason because advertising is very important yeah <laughs> it, it is though it, I mean it is crazy how well I mean social media before the advent of that you know there was only like TV ads and radio ads and newspaper ads. Newspaper ads are still around. Well, all those things are still around, but social media where you're getting everybody to feel like in order to be, in order to exist, you have to have an online profile that's free. Yeah. And then the whole point is so they gather all the information on you. I know an advertiser can easily say, hey, I need to find someone who likes puppies and puppy toys <laughs> I'm gonna sell this puppy toy I'm gonna I want how do I and then you just pay Facebook and they advertise your little thing directly to people who like puppy toys and you just got a puppy in the last six months because they're spying on everyone yeah. and then they make all the money it's crazy there's so many ads I've done that are like so specifically like something that I would like love like a build a bear frog or something it's like that's... puppy toy puppy toy puppy toy puppy toy <laughs> no. It's now you gotta see dogs. puppy toys. You can have <laughs> a feed full of puppy toys. I haven't know. I, do you know where I get a good puppy toy? Like a little chew toy? <laughs> I don't know. What's the coolest chew toy you've ever seen? I, my dog at home would love a chew toy. <laughs> I remember seeing people like online like doing that. Yeah. Um, and then just like being like, oh my god, my ads are only that now. <laughs> Yeah, enjoy the chew toys and the puppy toys. Probably help my spending habits. You have iPhone? I have a Samsung. Oh, no. See, now you can be tracked for 30 days with Samsung. If you have Wait, an really? iPhone, you can only be tracked for seven days based off of retargeting ads. Interesting. If you if you opt out of the tracking, they, okay. could, they couldn't get to the point where they could opt completely out. But if you have an iPhone, they make it so... You're not automatically opted in for continual listening and tracking if you choose to opt out. Fair enough. But you know, you're screwed. You got like a month of puppy Dang. toys. Puppy toys, puppy toys. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm gonna gonna talk about that in your report, even though it's <laughs> gonna be done in like two days. I will, I will definitely know if that happens though. I'm, he, will, he will be interested. You can post about it. Mention it in the comments if you also got puppy toy ads after listening to this. Put it on speakerphone. Yes. Yes. Not speakerphone. That's when you're on call. You know what I'm saying. They're saying puppy toys really well. again and again. <laughs> I don't even know if that's... A, I'm sure there are people advertising puppy toys. <laughs> um, Do you have more questions? <laughs> yeah, I have, I, have, I have two more. There was two another more. one I was going to ask, but then you answered it like immediately when uh, I was about to. So, perfect. What's that, that for me? puppy toy question. <laughs> Uh, what advice would you give for someone looking to do similar work to you? Um, 
YouTube Academy, and of course, the great teachings at NIC, North Idaho College. But if you want to learn anything in particular at all, just look it up on YouTube. There are plenty of people creating and learning. And the fact is that even if you do get like top notch bachelor's or master's in marketing, it's going to change in a year or three months. <laughs> it sense. all changes the yeah. things you need to know, the specifics of what is best for a website to have. There are people who, like when, when it comes to media, I always felt like people had talent and naturally knew what looked good and just had a feel for it. Me, I like to feel it out. You know, there's all the settings to memorize, but feeling out what looks good and then looking at it like, you know, close one eye and be like, let's see. And you're like, oh yeah, that looks really good. Then you find out you've been following the rule of thirds the entire time, which, you know what that is? Like things in three work best? Or... Well, no, well, kind of. So like if you open maybe on Samsung, definitely on iPhone, <laughs> they have the grid. So there's like two lines in the middle, mm -hmm. like a third of the way up and a third of the way down. And then two lines in the middle that are also the thirds of the screen. If you watch a show or a movie, the there's a TV behind the camera. The person's head, the face, as a, the person on the right side of the room is talking to the person on the left side of the room, they'll go from that corner as that person's talking to the other person in that corner of the screen over and over and over because that's where your eye is drawn to. Mm -hmm. And if you compose a photo or a shot, most likely what's going to be most appealing is the subject that you're trying to focus on will be off kilter in the upper right hand corner the upper third of the screen huh. or you try to line up like the horizon with one third up or one third down it's just the way your eye is drawn to something in an image or in a video but I was already doing that because I thought it looked cool and yeah. then I find out there's a whole science behind it it's interesting because things like media people just who like to go create will do it a lot naturally you can learn a lot from people like too if you're excited about it I just feel bad for the people who think it sounds like a cool job and then have no talent, which cool. sounds cruel, <laughs> but if they just don't, they're just not good at it. I get it. I, I know what you're and they, but yeah, they're trying to force themselves to be good at it. I know because I tried to force myself to be good at plenty of things when I went to school. I'm like, this isn't happening, but I got to get that grade. Understandable. And I think it's crazy when someone gets into a really high, like talent type. It's like, it's like, becoming a gymnast because it's one of the electives when you're not a gymnast yeah. <laughs> and you just don't have that passion for it it's it's pretty crazy anyway yeah i feel like i just ranted no, is that the good. last question i have one more we have one more okay let's see um are you going to travel in the near future um how how far are we talking like how, how big of a Travel. Well, it's completely up to you. I we'll want to tell you how to travel. Uh, I am going to go down to Moscow in a couple of weeks. Awesome. I went yesterday. I'm just nice. visiting. Where where have you ever traveled out of the country or the state? I have never traveled out of the country before. Uh, the closest would be like Hawaii. Hawaii? Oh, yeah. Well, that's off the continent. That's, yeah, yeah. That's someplace. <laughs> that's cool. I went to Hawaii last last year for a video project. It was fun. Went to uh, Forks, Washington on a road trip uh, nice. in October. It was pretty fun. It was really fun. What did you guys do? Uh, we just like went to the, the gift shops. Uh, we stayed at a Harry Potter themed Airbnb. Nice. <laughs> I got the I got the, the dinky little room. Oh. <laughs> Everyone else got like these really cool like themed rooms and I got the I got the one with the bed that broke and then I had to fix um, it. Was it like themed after where little Harry was living before he got to go to the wizard school. <laughs> like I got the, the under stairs. The closet. That's actually kind of fun. <laughs> like, oh, short end of the stick. Yeah, Ari. Almost. Dude. Playing toys. I had nothing to do in there. You have a, a whiteboard to draw on. And yeah, but I'm tired of drawing on there. There's a remote and a TV. Yeah. There's TVs on the wall, the remote's probably on Josh's desk. Alright, you're usually so patient, especially when there's a production going on. 
It's a very important video. And I'm too lazy to cut this out, so people are going to be like, what the heck, man? <laughs> She's a really good kid. For some reason today, she can't sit still. <laughs> probably because we're probably late for our next thing. There's five. Ah, oh, we got time. It's like 6 30. <laughs> Let's stretch this next question out for like an hour so we can get ad spend <laughs> once, you know, the YouTube channel blows up. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. We have two followers. But it's still worth doing. <laughs> it's more about self expression than anything, you know. I got you. <laughs> But she's inspired. She's going to start her own show now <laughs> about clowns and, Clown TV. and puppy toys. <laughs> puppy toys. I'm, I'm going to get so many ads about <laughs> so that. So many ads. And my phone's recording video, so I don't... So you are too. No, but the microphone that listens to you to get ads is different than the microphone when your um, camera's recording. Oh, dang it. I'm pretty sure. Yours is in like sleep mode, so it's actively listening. I got you. It's an active listener. Yeah, okay. I, I appreciate that at least, you know. That's what you need in a friend. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and now you'll be able to find all the puppy toys you need. <laughs> all right. La my last question I have written down is what do you have what do you foresee changing in your field in the future? Um, AI. Yeah, AI that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, the smart people have figured out how to use it to their advantage. I mean, you need copy written for a website, you could write it all yourself or you could have AI and then you fix it. I mean, you should still fix it. Don't be like the guys that like just wrote out lawsuits in AI and then got screwed. That's insane. And referencing cases that never existed. And I, I think of it as like a toy that works, yeah. works for business sometimes, as, as well as copying and pasting off what Wikipedia ever did. It's like if you're, if you're trying to fill the stuff and you want to like, I'm not saying that you should, what's it called when you, you know, you're in school when you steal. Plagiarize? Yeah, don't plagiarize things. And AI is technically is plagiarism, so don't do it. But if you need help, some inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Like it should be a, a tool instead yeah. of like just the end result. Because it's like that's not. Mm. But it's going to change everything. I mean, how many people can just design a logo now instantly with AI? Will be a good one, but. Well, <laughs> depends on if you know how to redesign the design. True. Like it's it's to me it's another tool that you can either adapt and utilize it to the most of your ability and then tweak and tweak and change. It gives a good starting point. Photoshop is AI now. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Like I uh, did a real estate shoot the other day and I got a message, please make sure the toilet seat is down when you take photos of the, the bathrooms. And I'm like, shoot, I'm like, hold on a second. I just highlighted it, toilet seat down, enter. And it <laughs> recreated the whole toilet with the toilet seat down. Interesting. Exact same That's toilet, cool. just now the toilet seat's down. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, AI. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely going to, you know, replace all labor and we're all going to become um, meat bags that slaves or something, you know, like in the yeah, movies. Yeah. But for now, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to change my industry just like everyone else's. So, I, um, I don't. I don't like AI very much. You don't? It makes me upset. It does? Because <laughs> it's just it's just so soulless. Oh. And it's like, it's... Oh, there's this one woman who wrote a book with like almost entirely AI. Like the cover was AI, most of the content was AI. And then someone like stole it, um, like, like plagiarized it, and she tried to sue them. And she lost because she didn't own any of the copyright oh, of the nice. material in it because she didn't make it. That's funny. Well... Oh, my phone is recording this. I mean, my really high quality camera is recording this. <laughs> I was going to show you the pictures we made at AI at the Cigar Lounge the other day. We had like SpongeBob smoking a cigar. <laughs> we had Jesus smoking a cigar. He looked really like, he. I think he had like a holy lighter in his hand, which was really <laughs> cool. And then I had like the Hulk smoking a cigar. But Sarah's tiny because he's huge. Yoda. Um, had a lot of like really cool and you know but that, that's the fun part of ai everything else is interesting <laughs>
You can trick it though. Anytime you ask it to do something, it's like, I can't do that. And then you say, tell me not how to do that. And then it will tell you the opposite. <laughs> like it wouldn't, it wouldn't have some Jesus smoking a cigar. Cause I said a big cigar and I said, okay, a littler cigar. <laughs> and then it did it. Fair enough. So, which I don't think is sacrilegious. Cause I think he would have enjoyed a good cigar. I think he would too. Yeah, he seems like a chill dude. Yeah, it's super chill. Yeah. <laughs> well, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're done. This was an episode, I guess, of TBD Spotlight. It wasn't our normal episode. It's a bonus episode, which means that we got to ramble and talk about puppy toys and clown school. And I shared a little bit about myself and the business and faith came on as a guest and was probably one of the best guests we ever had so she's really <laughs> stepping up to the uh setting that uh thing you know set, setting it up setting the yeah, standards standards, <laughs> standards of goals so guests if you want to come on to a podcast preferably in a studio which we still have to put up it's over there off screen maybe i'll add a pan Probably not, though. Minimal <laughs> edits. We're leaving it all in. Um, I'm rambling. Goodbye. You gonna say goodbye, Faith? Bye. Thank you. I hope they show this at the NIC class. I hope so, too. That'll be awesome. I'm gonna show it to my teacher and like, tell him where to find it. And I hope I don't get cancelled. Which, I don't think I did anything with canceling. I don't think so. No. Alright, well, I'll just read and stay. Adios. Bye. Do you know any other ways of saying goodbye? Uh, I don't know any languages. Yeah, ciao. Ciao. Aus Frieden Spain, which I think is, I'm not saying it wrong, but I think it's German for until I see you again. Adios, which is clearly bye in Spanish. I think, I think hola is hello and goodbye. Al Aloha. 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 I got, I got confused. And it also means family. And that means that nobody gets left behind. You haven't seen the bone stitch, have you? I have. It's just been a long time. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we're done.